Good morning, Campbell McCreary here at Anvest Capital in New York City. Welcome to the Arcana Silver Corporation live webinar. Arcana, of course, trades on the venture as AUN, Alpha Utah Nevada, and AUNFF, uh, Alpha Utah Nevada Foxtrot, Foxtrot on the QX. Do hope you'll enjoy today's program. It will be available in replay mode. Um, you can catch this and other webinars at ambestcapital.com slash webinars, and the replay for this show will be available at that address, ambestcapital.com slash webinars, in about an hour once it finished processing. Um, do feel free to chat in your questions, and we'll ask them in real time. So we love uh, questions sent in, and uh, we'll, we'll try and get to them. New York is a New York-based specialist investment management and corporate finance firm and uh, focused only on the natural resource uh, mining uh, energy space. Um, very pleased to have with us today, uh, Kevin Drover. Um, and before I talk about this company, of course, uh, this call is for uh, informational purposes only. Please note this disclaimer. Um, so Kevin Drover is the president and CEO, making you presenter, Kevin. And if you wanna log on the video, um, 40 years, one of 40 years of both domestic and international experience and operations, project development, management, and process re-engineering uh, for developers and producers. Uh, he was recently the COO of Glencairn, responsible for two gold mining operations in Latin America, and he was also the VP of operations for Kinross. So without any further ado, just turn on your uh, your PowerPoint there. Um, Near-term producer, Arcana Silver. Kevin? Okay. Right on, you're in. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks everybody for, uh, for attending. Um, I'm gonna give you uh, uh, an update on where we are with the uh, Revenue Virginia's Mine, a little bit, I guess, on the Shafter project that we've got in Texas. So uh, happy that you're attending, and uh, here we go. Uh, we've got two um, projects, uh, both in the United States. The Shafter project is down here uh, near Marfa, Texas. It's about a three-hour drive from El Paso. Uh, many of you uh, may know about it. It's been with Orcana for some time since about 2008. It's at a PEA level right now. Uh, we're looking to do a drill program uh, probably sometime in April. Uh, we want to try and see if we can expand the resource, but we also want to get some metallurgical uh, samples for uh, uh, metallurgical work as part of a feasibility study. So we're focusing on that a little bit right now. Uh, but the flagship of the company uh, is right here in Colorado. Uh, it's the uh, Revenue Virginia's mine just outside of, uh, of URA. It's about a seven hour drive southwest of Denver or a half hour plane ride if you prefer to do that. Um, the flagship is uh, the revenue mine is a silver mine with gold and base metals credit uh, credits. Uh, we're located and, and we're uh, in the US, of course, and we're fully permitted for production. We're also fully funded for production and uh, we've got a substantial contingency uh, in, in the kitty right now to ensure that we get to production. We've got our full management team and most of our uh, our hourly people on site. We Right now we've got about 110 people of our own on site. Uh, we're going up to eventually once in full production uh, to about 150. Uh, we've got about 20 contractors in that vicinity uh, doing some work in the mill. We're doing all of our production development ourselves. Uh, we're low cost to production. Uh, all in sustaining cost as per the feasibility is about eight bucks an ounce. We think that's going to go up a little bit. And the reason I say that is because we've, we've seen labor costs increase uh, over and above what we had in the, uh, in the feasibility study. So we're thinking we're going to be kind of closer to nine dollar an ounce uh, once we're up and running here. Our underground development is on the way. Um, and the mill optimization work is also uh, on the way and we're targeting third quarter uh, to, of this year to be in production specifically right in the bang in the middle of the summer, just that last week of July, first week of August. Uh, significant upside potential to the current reserves and I'll, I'll run through that. 
We have some regional consolidation opportunities that we're taking a look at as well. And of course, uh, we do have the, uh, the Shafter project um, uh, as a development project uh, to come online, hopefully pending you know, a positive feasibility study. And given the higher prices of silver, we think it's a mine somewhere 18 to 24 months from now. Uh, just a little bit about Orcana itself, uh, 275 million shares out, 117 million warrants, about 40 million of those warrants are a strike price of 37 and a half cents. They've got about another year to run. Uh, another 40 million are at 75 cents and they're about a two year uh, uh, out. And the last uh, is uh, last 34 million, give or take is um, $1.25 strike price, and they've got pretty much uh, three years to run. Fully diluted, 397. Got 48 million bucks in the bank right now. We did take on some debt uh, in December uh, with a, a Mercurier. Uh, it's a $28 million facility, five year, uh, 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 one year grace period, 12 month grace period, and prepayable without any penalty beyond that. Uh, just a little uh, on, on market comparables, uh, we're, we're looking at market capitalization here. As you can see, uh, you know, we're pretty low down the totem pole. We have a very high grade mine. We're 37, and ounce, uh, 37 ounces per ton. Uh, and yet, you know, we haven't got the respect, I, I guess, in the, in the market that I believe we reserve, deserve. Um, grade is very high, uh, one of the highest grade mines uh, around. All in sustaining costs, very low. And uh, we, I, we think we certainly got room to, uh, to see our share price move up uh, quite considerably as we go uh, uh, into production. And I think that that's going to be the catalyst for the next leg up on this uh, particular stock is going to be when we hit production. Uh, just a few metrics on the feasibility study itself. Many of you have already seen this, I'm sure. But uh, we have a proven and probable reserve here of 21 million ounces at 37 ounces per ton. Uh, about a 3.1 million ounce uh, average production. Well, we're looking at sort of doing some things here to improve that as we go forward. And I'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. We show our all-in sustaining costs here as per the feasibility at eight bucks an ounce, but we, we think it's gonna be closer to nine. Um, the feasibility study was done. Uh, this is the price deck down here, 1850 silver, 1300 gold, uh, dollar lead and a dollar 20 zinc. We're, we're not far off these numbers down here, but we're considerably higher, of course, on the precious metal side. So you can see that uh, most of our revenue is derived from silver, 8% uh, from gold, 15% from lead and 6% from zinc. Uh, the IRR on uh, on this project at 1850 was 75 million. Uh, sorry, the NPV was 75 million, and the IRR was 71 percent. Obviously, at 26 bucks, uh, we're much higher both on the NPV and the IRR uh, at this stage of the game. Uh, just a quick look at our, our milling operation. This is a beautiful uh, uh, setup down there. It's underground. We are, of course, up uh, high in the mountains. Uh, the portal goes into the mine at 10,600 feet. Uh, the mine, uh, it's avalanche country there. In the old days, they had significant trouble with avalanches, with uh, accidents, and even the mill uh, was uh, badly damaged, subsequently caught on fire and burned down back in the, in the uh, 1912, I believe it was. So this mill was put underground. Uh, it, it would probably be cost prohibitive to do that today, uh, but it is, uh, it's there. Um, we're doing some work in the crushing circuit. We're making sure uh, to debug uh, some of the things that we saw from the previous operation. We're expanding the, uh, the flotation circuit, essentially doubling the residence time there. So uh, all of that is going very well. Uh, we are, um, all of our capital equipment uh, is, is virtually everything is on site now. It's all bought. Uh, we're, we're really not exposed anymore to, uh, you know, to delivery problems or, or really even to COVID. Uh, here in Ure County, uh, virtually everybody is now eligible for uh, vaccination and uh, people are, are getting vaccinated very, very quickly. Uh, so that's, that's great news and it takes certainly uh, a weight off my shoulders that once we get all of our employees vaccinated, that we'll be hopefully out from under the, the threat of COVID. And in addition to that, we're 
sorry, we're coming into spring, so the winter is behind us. It was a bit challenging with uh, with uh, you know winter storms and whatnot coming through, so we lost a little bit of time uh, as we were working through our schedule, but we intend to pick that up as we go forward. Um, picture of the footprint, the surface footprint, very small. Um, this is the area right here is going to be our, our tailing storage area. It's dry stack tails, best available technology. We are, our water treatment is a passive water treatment system. It's all built. We completed it last fall. It's in operation and working. Uh, we're doing some upgrading on surface, putting in uh, a couple of buildings to give us uh, the ability to stay out of the snow during the winter with uh, supplies and so on. And we're expanding our change room for uh, you know the number of miners uh, that we're going to need on a go forward basis, not just miners but mill people as well. Uh, so all's going well uh, there. Um, this is an important slide to get a real understanding of uh, of the potential of this project itself. Um, we own nine major veins. We picked up some other ground uh, since probably uh, some of you have, have last heard me speak um, and we're, we're intending to pick up some more. But right now we have nine major veins, virtually all of which have been in production at one time or another over the past 150 years. The one that we are mainly concerned with right now is the Virginia's vein, which is this one right here. We now own 16,000 continuous feet of this vein. This vein outcrops the surface all along right here, the 16,000 feet. So we can see it wherever it goes because of apex law in Colorado, we own it. It doesn't matter if it's on our claim or not, but wherever it goes, we own it and we can mine it. Um, this mine operated from about 1876 till 1912. Uh, and this area right here in the middle, the gray area in the red triangle, is what was mined out back in that day. Uh, they took uh, roughly 25 million ounces out of here, uh, and the grade was in excess of 60 ounces per ton. It was a very, very high grade mine. They used a mining method called Rissou mining, which is basically just split blasting. You, you come in, you, you drill the ore and the waste. The stope is about four feet wide. The vein is about a foot and a half wide. So you drill both, but you shoot the waste first, and it drops down, you take it out, send it to the mill, you come back in, you uh, uh, load the, uh, the waste holes, you blast them, stand on it, do it all over again. So it minimizes dilution. That's the idea of that mining method is to minimize your dilution. Uh, OSMI, uh, Ure Silver, uh, us down here, uh, we, we did four runs, four different runs in test stopes to make sure that this mining method worked. It worked certainly for 46 years of operation for the previous operator. And what we found was it worked equally as well for us. Uh, our average dilution coming out of that, uh, those four test runs was about 20%. We think you know, we should settle in at about 25%. The other thing that gives me a little bit of comfort here in terms of, of minimizing dilution is we know that uh, ore sorting works as well. We, there's been some work done on this. Uh, and it seems to work very well. We've not put an ore sorter in, but uh, it, it would be relatively easy to put in, and the cost of that is probably right around a million dollars. So from our perspective, uh, we're gonna be focused in on this Virginia Spain. And the previous operation, that 46 years of operation, it also focused on the Virginia Spain as well. It's very high grade, it's steeply dipping, it's e relatively easy to mine. So down here, you see these uh, blue, or purple, green, and uh, the, uh, the pink. The pink and the purple is our mine plan. That's our seven year mine life right now. The, the green that's right, uh, I can find my, okay. The green that's right here, this is inferred. It's only inferred simply because we couldn't get a drill hole in this thing. Uh, but it's just not logical that you have uh, indicated and measured uh, ore down here and up here and not have it there. I mean, that's, it's almost impossible for that to happen. So we're very confident that this green area is gonna come into our mine plan. And that's, that's gonna give us pretty close to a, probably a nine year mine life, even before we really get into production. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, very, very quickly increasing our mine life. But right now, as per the feasibility study, we have seven years. 
Um, we are we trace the vein up here on surface. We've sampled that vein. We know it's there. Uh, we believe that the future is going to be as we get up here is to continue going to the north. Now that's not in the plan. That's going to give us decades of uh, of uh, uh, operation above the so-called seven years that we've got. Let's, let me just take you to the next slide. This is where we are today. Uh, this is the main haulage level. This is roughly 9,000 feet. This is all in place, track laid, um, water, power, uh, you name it, it's all done. We are, are uh, driving three vertical raises to get up into this area right here, which is this area in here. This is our main focus. This area of our uh, of the uh, mine is very high grade. Uh, it, it'll run above 55 ounces per ton up here. So we obviously want to get into that and bring it forward. Uh, so right now we're driving uh, two raises at the moment. The third one will start uh, literally next week. The number one raise is uh, mainly for access. So we're, we're coming up here to the uh, 1200 level. Right now we're at the 1800 level. The number, and, and this is a hoist will go in here or an elevator if you, if you want, uh, and water, power, uh, ventilation, and, uh, and so on, and air. So this is going to be, uh, this one is so that we can move our men materials up and down uh, rather expeditiously. So the number two raise, we're already up at the 1500. The number three will start soon. The number two and three raises, each one, one is designated for or coming down the other for waste coming down so that will facilitate that right now we are driving on the 1800 level and we're driving on the 1500 level the idea being is that we're going to get two stopes in this area right here and at least two stopes up here without having to go over here uh, so this will be confined right now. But obviously, as we uh, we drift on vein here, uh, we'll continue to follow that vein. So if it continues to go, uh, we're going to be continuing to go uh, out this way as well. Um, sorry for jumping around. So uh, we need two stopes to operate. The 1800 level, just this much here, would give us a nine to 10 months, 1500 uh, uh, the same. So we're going to mine our way up here and then to the uh, to the north. Uh, we're on target right now uh, and on schedule uh, to uh, to deliver this uh, project into uh, production uh, in midsummer. Uh, we're hoping to speed that up a little bit, and we're we're working on some plans as we speak right now. Uh, but we're we're not completely finished at this stage of the game. But even by that standards of getting ourselves into production in uh, you know uh, midsummer. Uh, I don't think there's anybody else around that's near to that uh, to, to have a, a mine coming on online that uh, soon. So that's where we are right now. We're pretty much on schedule. We're pretty much on budget, and um, uh, things are going uh, very reasonably well. We're coming out of the winter, and uh, we look forward to uh, you know certainly less downtime due to storms and, and things like that. Um, from the regional uh, perspective, this is a very uh, prolific mining area over the last 150 years. There's literally been thousands of mines here uh, operated. We're the only game in town right now. We're up right here. This is us, uh, the Revenue of Virginia's mine. Uh, there's nobody else with a uh, permitted mill and, 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 and uh, obviously, you know, a mine that's going into operation. These have, were all long life mines. And, and the reason I, I want to tell you this is to put us in perspective. This is narrow vein mining. These veins go on for a very long way. Uh, they go almost vertical up and down. Uh, the Idorado uh, mine, which was owned by Newmont, ran for 120 years. The uh, Camp Bird mine, uh, which produced in excess of a million ounces of gold, ran for more than 100 years. Sunnyside produced 2 million ounces of gold and ran for over 100 years. Shenandoah dives over 100 years. And many of the other ones you see here ran multi-decades. Uh, and, you know, and, and this mine, our mine that we're putting back in production, ran 46 years in the past. And it didn't shut down because it ran out of ore. It shut down because the mill burned down and the, uh, 
the Reynolds family decided to go play uh, with the gold uh, mining uh, sector as opposed to silver. Silver was price was depressed at the time, and they decided not to rebuild. So this is a very prolific area. Uh, the, the town of Ure uh, up here where, where we're stationed, uh, Silverton, and even Telluride that is now turned more of a ski hill. But yeah, this, these are mining towns. The people here know mining. Many of our, our employees actually come from Silverton and Ure uh, and these uh, particular areas around us here. And the community, uh, they, they, um, we, we've integrated very nicely into the community. We, we enjoy really good support, uh, both from the community, the, lo the local county, the, the state and, and federal officials, uh, NGOs. We've had uh, senators, uh, county commissioners, mayors. We've had virtually everybody through this mine. Uh, and we, uh, we enjoy right now uh, some very, very good relations. And we intend to uh, we intend to keep it that way going forward. Um, a little bit on, on consolidation in the area, as you can see on uh, on this uh, slide right here, there's there's ample opportunity from old mines and uh, exploration upside and so on. But we're rather focused on on just a few instead of the many. Uh, and just to speak about a couple, there is more, of course, that we've got. Um, the bluegrass claim was an interruption in our, um, I'll just bump back here quickly, uh, it was this claim right here. It was actually an interruption in the Virginia's claim, uh, but we, we now own that. Uh, we did that deal last year and uh, it's worked out very well for us. Um, one of the, the uh, assets that's near us here, and this is about a half hour trucking distance from our mill, is the Ruby Trust Mine. Ruby Trust Mine is a past a uh, high-grade gold producer, ran for many, many years. It's up for sale. Uh, we're looking at doing some due diligence on that, but ultimately uh, it, this could be a, a mine that you could bring into production fairly quickly. Um, there's a lot of underground development already done. There's been quite a bit of drilling done, those kinds of things. We're not ready to pull the trigger on this just yet. Uh, we do need to do our homework in terms of, uh, you know, any liabilities that we might be taking on. So we want to do some due diligence first. But this is something that we could uh, bring into the fold and uh, deliver ore from here into our existing mill. Uh, and that would uh, give us a fair bit of a boost that it, it runs, we believe, in excess of a half an ounce per ton gold right now. Uh, but we still have to do the work on it. The Orvis claims are really just an extension of some of our claims that we're interested in. Uh, you know, we're, we're close to a deal on that. We've had some negotiations and one. I don't think it's going to take a lot of money to bring those on. Uh, we haven't pulled a trigger on any of this just yet. Uh, the other uh, asset uh, in the region that makes some sense for us is this uh, purple, or uh, sorry, the pink area here. That's the Camp Bird mine. It's uh, shut down. Uh, it's on care and maintenance right now. It's got a couple of features that are, are of interest to us. Uh, number one is that it is almost exactly 900 feet directly below us. It has a 10,000 foot tunnel that comes in right underneath us, which would give us access or an alternative access uh, up to our mine. Uh, secondly, uh, the, uh, the other thing here are, are these two tailings ponds. These are two permitted tailings ponds that would give us uh, a, a lot of additional tailings capacity. Right now, we have su a sufficient uh, tailings capacity to accommodate all of the, uh, the uh, tails uh, and waste that's going to come from our particular mine. But, you know, with a, a view to the future, and uh, looking at the possibility of expanding here and growing this uh, operation, uh, this this would be of, of, a, of a great benefit to us to be able to uh, to have those for the future. And secondly, uh, or thirdly, I guess the uh, they have a 1,500 ton a day site that is permitted for a mill. There's no mill there, but there's a site that is permitted for that. So you know, with those things. Uh, this becomes, uh, you know, uh, something that certainly is of interest to us. Uh, there are willing sellers here. Uh, we've not, uh, again, we've had negotiations and we've talked to people, but we haven't pulled the trigger on any of these things just yet. Uh, but we hope to be able to come to some kind of agreement uh, in the near future 
uh, to bring some of this in because I think it would add considerable value uh, as we uh, go forward. Uh, the other uh, thing that I, I wanted to uh, touch base on was the capacity of the mill. Uh, the mill we've got is designed for in excess of 500 tons a day. Uh, we are starting up and, and the feasibility was designed at uh, 270 tons per day and at 270 tons per day at 37 ounce per ton silver grade we can produce 3.1 about 3.1 3.2 million ounces per year uh, however the that's that's only about half the capacity of the mill so we are looking to actually begin to increase that tonnage rate we, we want to start up at 270 tons per day we want to make sure we get our metallurgy sorted out, our cost profile, our productivities, uh, and, and get the plant and the mine settled down so that we're, we're meeting our goals and objectives. But very quickly beyond that, we want to be able to, we, we want to go up in two steps. Our first one would be roughly nine months after we would start up, we should be in a position to go to a, a step up to 405 tons per day, and then Another year later, we would be in a position to take it up to right around 500 tons per day. The reason for that, of course, is that in this type of mining that we're doing, uh, excuse me, um, development of the uh, ore in front of you in, in uh, a long enough lead time so that your, your production is not bumping up on your development is really, really important. So you have to get the development done out in front uh, in order to be able to increase the tonnage. And at the same time as we're doing that, we are looking to expand the mine life of, uh, of the Revenue Virginias right now. So we're, we're looking at doubling the production and doubling the, uh, the life of mine. And, and that's where our head is right now. But the focus for us is absolutely first, get ourselves into production and, uh, and get ourselves cash flowing and uh, you know, on that road to uh, being able to de develop uh, ourselves further out. Uh, the second thing here that I think is important is that we do have the Shafter project. Uh, we are looking at doing the, uh, a drill program. We are looking at, uh, as part of that drill program, uh, collecting metallurgical sampling uh, for a feasibility study. We would hope that if everything goes well, uh, that we could start a feasibility study probably in the fall of this year. And, uh, and look out about 18 to 24 months, we could have the Shafter project in, pr in production. We would anticipate about a seven year mine life for that given current uh, cutoff grades and uh, price of silver. Uh, and we would anticipate about between two and a half and three million ounces a year. So if you, if you do a little bit of arm waving here and, and, and do uh, all the addition, uh, when we go to uh, 500 tons a day, we should be in the range of about 6 million to 6.5 million ounces of, of uh, silver a year. Add to that, say, 2.5 million uh, coming from Shafter. We should be right in that mid-tier uh, producer status, and hopefully that would be another catalyst uh, for this company. So we're, uh, you know, we're, we're focused on the short term. Uh, we're looking to the long term. Uh, to get this operation up and uh, get it running, get it profitable, expand it, uh, and then go from there. So with that, I'm going to uh, take a pause and uh, and take any questions that you may have. All right, good job. Um, have some questions that were sent in. And again, everyone, please send in your questions and uh, we'll ask them along with our questions. Um, just circling back, you've some of this is already buried in in your uh, comprehensive presentation, but uh, how long again is the debt payback once in production? The debt facility is five years. Uh, we have a, a one year grace period on that. Uh, we can prepay anytime after the first year. Uh, you know, uh, theoretically, in the first year, we could pay this thing back. This thing throws off enough cash, at, certainly at twenty six bucks. Uh, we would be in the uh, 50 million after-tax free cash flow uh, in at, at these prices. Uh, and then, and the ramp expected ramp up period. Uh, we're looking at three months for a full ramp up. I'm I'm certainly hoping that we're going to do it quicker than that, and I, I think we will. But that's what we've got in the uh, in the the feasibility study is a three months ramp up. So we'll put ore into the mill in um, 
in July, and we should have be cash flow positive in uh, uh, late September or September. Mm -hmm. uh, hurdles, always hurdles. Uh, uh, are there any hurdles? Um, expected hurdles, potential hurdles, hurdles in general? Uh, what you could know, go wrong? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I was sweating, to be very honest with you. Uh, you know, as we started yeah. this in uh, December with winter, you know, we were, we were starting up in winter and, and the weather is always unpredictable. If you don't like it here in the San Juan, just wait a minute kind of thing. Uh, it's that kind of changeable. And the other one was COVID, was the big concern that we had and the effect it could have on the schedule. Now, we've been lucky uh, right now that, that we did have a bout of COVID in October. We lost some schedule at that point in time. Uh, but um, right now, uh, virtually everybody in Ure County is eligible for vaccination. So we are less and less concerned about the COVID, uh, or the COVID uh, uh, issue. We were concerned about deliveries of our equipment, our major equipment. We got virtually everything on site now. There, there's, we're, we're really not, uh, uh, you know, susceptible to any delays or, or any of those kinds of things. So um, I'm less worried. We're seeing our productivity numbers uh, improve. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting a, a really good handle on uh, how this thing and how long it's going to take and all of those great things. And of course, you know, the, the, uh, the critical path is the pre-production development underground. The mill is, uh, is going well. We don't anticipate any problem. It should be ready in June uh, to put a work through it. Uh, but pre-production development, uh, that's always the, uh, the big outlier. Uh, but right now it's going, uh, it's going very well. We're actually developing on two levels, the 1500 and the 1800, and that's where our first stoves are gonna be provide ore to the mill. Arrow vein mining is typically very challenging with dilution, staying on the veins, et cetera. Uh, how many active stopes uh, will you require to reach a nominal 300 tons per day or more? We need two operating stopes and, uh, and essentially one on standby because you, you need a place to go. And we're going to essentially what we're going to have when we start up, we'll have four stopes. Uh, two on the 1800 would probably be the first two that will go into production. And then two on the 1500 will come very, very soon right after that. Uh, so I think we're going to be in really good shape um, to, uh, you know, certainly get ourselves uh, comfortable, comfortably in production. Does your mill incorporate high intensity grinding HIG or are there plans? to? No, 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 no. We don't need to grind this thing to buck dust at all. Uh, we're, we're not uh, actually our, our grind is actually fairly coarse uh, in comparison to some of the other uh, your minds that uh, are around now where we're uh, we're uh, kind of 110 millimeter or uh, micron uh, grind for our flotation circuit so we're in we're in a nice place not hard to um water issues no real water issues we uh we've got uh, water systems um uh, we use very very little we recycle just about everything that we use is a very small bleed so no uh, water issues no power issues, no manpower issues, uh, those kinds of things. Okay, and then when could you say we expect to have a first full year of commercial production? I would say beginning in September of this year, uh, that will be the start of our full uh, commercial production for the first year. So two, 2022 would be the first full calendar year of production. Great. Thank you. Gabe? Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Campbell. <clears throat> Hi, Kevin. Just I was wondering about, you know, you mentioned the winter storms. Did you get any sort of water seepage in the mine or from the rock, uh, rock uh, seepage yeah, in the water? It's, it's a very... It's a very relatively dry mine. We'll get water flow, uh, you know, as the spring runoff starts to melt. Uh, we, we will get that. Uh, that um, typically starts, I believe, in uh, mid-April kind of thing. Uh, we don't anticipate any problem with that. Uh, our water treatment system is fully designed to handle those flows, so, uh, and we've got it all completed as of uh, you know, last year. So we're, we're in really good shape for the spring runoff. Great. And in terms of, you know, since you completed the feasibility study, you mentioned early in the presentation um, about ore sorting. Is there any uh, other sort of um, efficiency gains that you have identified uh, that you could implement? 
you know, uh, um, or sorting uh, is certainly one of the things that you could do. You know, you can, uh, it, it presents some other problems, of course, as well. You know, what do you do with the waste that you, uh, you, you chuck out of there? Uh, but the, the ore sorting itself works fairly well. You can reject about 65% of the waste uh, with only about three, less than 3% losses of metal. So that, that, that's a pretty good place to be. Uh, the one thing that would actually allow you to do is increase the throughput through the mill. The mill being underground, it's going to be very difficult to expand that mill. And that's one of the reasons that Camp Bird site was of interest to us. If we you know, are lucky enough to find additional uh, materials and whatnot, you could build a mill there. But another way to do it is also to sort the ore before going into, uh, going into the mill itself, where you could take out a large amount of the waste. And that way, you could actually mine more and put it to the mill. Uh, we just still got to deal with that additional um, uh, material that we would reject from the ore sorting. Great, and uh, if, just following on that, what's your sort of budgeted um, mill grade at the at the uh, you know the initial uh, ramp up? Uh, we're at 37 ounces per ton is our average grade. Average grade. Uh, we're going to be mining though in those areas uh, that I pointed to uh, where we're going to be mining first. Uh, those grades are going to be closer to 50 to 55, maybe even 60 ounces per ton. Uh, those stopes are very, very high grade up there. And, and, you know, as you may recall from the presentation, the historic grade coming out of this mine was uh, in excess of 60 ounces per ton. Great. Uh, just one more for me in terms of, um, you know, you have a slide there showing sort of where you are in terms of your, uh, your pre-development. Uh, or your pre-mine development, can, can you just quantify the sort of meters, vertical and horizontal that you need to achieve before? Yeah, well, we're going from, from uh, 2000 level up to the 1200 level. So that's 800 feet straight up with all of those three raises. So that's uh, 2400 feet of, uh, of vertical raising. Uh, and then we have the lateral development as well. I, I, not i think the lateral development is uh is probably in in the uh, we won't be we don't need to do this before we go into production uh but it's probably in excess of a, a thousand foot per level uh that we have to do uh so we'll do the 1500 and the 1800 get those ready to go and then we'll we'll uh just jump up to the 1200 uh, 900 and 600 levels uh but we we've, we've got time to do that we can be in production and then we'll continue with our development to get ourselves uh, in a position to be able to mine those higher grade areas up top. Great, sounds good. Thank you very much. Stu? Yeah, thanks for uh, the presentation. Um, you mentioned like you might have some slight cost increase, just, you know, high level, how would your like all in sustaining costs, C1 cash costs, all in sustaining cash costs compared to peers, you know, in the silver space? Uh, we, we would probably still be one of the lowest uh, in, in the business. Uh, you know, we, we did see labor increase um, uh, quite a bit. We did see it from a capital perspective, we did see steel prices increase a little bit. We've been able to offset that with, with some uh, savings and whatnot. But on the long term, uh, we don't uh, anticipate that labor is going to drop very much. So we're, we're, we're seeing that $8 an ounce that we've got in the feasibility study. We did an update to the feasibility study in June of 2020. The feasibility last update, uh, the third party update was in 2018. We didn't publish that, uh, but we did do an update to the capex and, and an update to the uh, operating costs. And what we saw was about a buck increase overall due to labor, almost all of it due to labor uh, in the all-in sustaining costs. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if people were uh, facing that labor costs given the increase in you know, activity across the sector. Um, and then the, the you know, they mentioned the cash flow and the debt payback. You know, I know you did the equity raise recently more for Texas. Um, just wondering how you're like managing cash flow in the future to pay down debt versus like expiration at site um, for like, you know, production drilling and then targeting some like regional expiration targets. Right. Yeah. Well, we've got some competing, you know, 
uh, targets for exploration. And right now, as a matter of fact, one of the things that we're in the process of doing is taking those uh, targets that we've got, assessing them, and then trying to prioritize because, you know, I mean, we don't have money to do everything. So we need to focus in and spend our money wisely. So we're, we're in the process of doing that right now. Uh, one of the things certainly uh, that we would, you know, uh, Shafter is a high priority there because we believe that that's going to be very valuable on, on a go forward basis as the silver price uh, continues to stay elevated and hopefully go higher. Uh, so, you know, we, we want to focus on that. Uh, we do have the option of, uh, you know, with our debt facility here, uh, and it's relatively pricey. You know, once we're in production and, and meet our commercial targets, our uh, interest rate drops to 10 and a half plus LIBOR, uh, but it's still quite uh, quite pricey. We may be able to find a cheaper debt facility to take that out. We may choose to just pay it off. Uh, you know, we, we will generate significant cash flow here in certainly the first couple of years as we, uh, you know, with this higher price and as we high, um, mine higher grade ore. So we, we've got a couple of options of how we can deal with it. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, we would probably like to get rid of this debt sooner rather than later. Yep, makes sense. And then the, uh, in that, you mentioned neighbors in the area um, and your consolidation play, are you seeing any other companies looking at picking up ground in this area given success you've had? No. Uh, we're, we're not hearing of anybody or seeing anybody at this stage of the game. Uh, I, I think it's going to be uh, it's somewhat difficult for somebody else to come in. You got to start from scratch. Uh, we got a good leg up. You know, we we know the players here. Uh, we've developed a great relationship with the uh, with the government and, and the regulators. And uh, uh, I think that this is going to be our sandbox to play in. To be honest with you. Nice. Uh, and then the old stoves. What are the conditions of them? And you're going to work around fast producing stoves or no we're 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 not uh, you know we're not uh, doing any remnant mining uh, we're uh, doing all pristine uh, uh, mining so that's the good part about this and you know I've been down that remnant mining road before and it's fraught with uh, with problems yeah I bet uh, one last question for me for Pastor already on the uh, you know concentrate you know what concentrates you're going to be producing what's the geochemistry of your and are there any potential like deleter deleterious elements yeah on a concentrate? that's a good question thanks for asking that because i forgot to mention it but we're going to produce two concentrates a lead and a zinc uh gold and silver go with the lead con uh zinc of course is uh, stands on its own trafigura we've signed an offtake agreement with traffic uh to take our concentrates and sell them um we get paid, uh, I think it's 95% at the gate at our, once we put them in the truck, uh, we get paid there and then settlement for the remaining 5% comes after smelter uh, returns and so on. Um, from a uh, metallurgical perspective, this ore is very straightforward. It's well known, uh, the, the, all of the flow sheets in the San Juans and all of the past producing mines all have the same flow sheet. We have the same flow sheet as they do. Our uh, lead recovery is about 96%. Our silver recovery is 95 and a half percent. I think uh, the zinc recovery is like 88%. Gold is, a, you know, the gold grade is not very high here. And uh, we're looking at about, a, I think a 60 to 65% recovery for gold. So metallurgically, this is very straightforward. There are no deleterious substances as such in the ore itself. Um, all of our tails uh, that we have, uh, we can sell, we have a permit to sell or give away. Um, and the county takes most of, of those uh, for road base. So we could sell up to 40% of our tails as road base. We can, similarly, we can sell or give away all of our waste rock, <coughs> which uh, allows us to, uh, you know, have a longer tailings capacity life. Right now, we have sufficient tailings uh, capacity for the life for all of our known reserves. Uh, but if we were to um, give away uh, or sell these uh, 40 40 percent of tails, and obviously you expand your tailings by 40 <coughs> percent. Excuse me. All right, so thanks for that. Already. Sorry, say again, Stuart. Just saying thanks and passing on to Artie. 
Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, when we look at the uh, past uh, producing flow sheet there and uh, your flow sheet right now, uh, what kind of mod modifications uh, you have done? Uh, I'm guessing you are going to work with the lower grade material. And I think you mentioned some uh, higher retention time at flotation tanks. So are you going to be like increasing the material uh, number, equipment number? Um, uh, let me start first with the, the, the front end. First of all, you know, our grades are 37 ounces per ton. So hardly, they're, they're not low grade. Uh, it's, it's pretty high grade. And one of the reasons that we have to increase the size or the capacity of the flotation circuit is because of that grade. Not necessarily the grade of the silver, but it's the grade of the lead. Lead is what dictates really the mill throughput and the rate of throughput. Uh, so we have stopes that run 15% lead. Uh, and uh, right now we're, we're modifying the mill to be able to accept about an average of 8% lead. So we'll need to do some blending when we hit those very high grade stopes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're doubling that residence time so that we don't lose any, if you lose lead, you lose silver, simple as that. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we do that, but we will have to, to uh, devise a blending plan. Now to try and do that in a feasibility study on a piece of paper, it, nobody would believe you even if you did do it because you need to be there to see where your grades are and say, I'm taking tons from here and there. So that, that's what we decided to do. And that's one of the reasons we limited the throughput in the feasibility study to 250 tons a day is because we don't have that blending uh, situation sorted out yet, but we will get that done. Now on the front end, uh, in the previous operation, they had vibrating feeders under their coarse ore bin. Uh, they proved problematic in times when they ran into some clays or anything like that. They had a cone crusher. It became a sticky problem again with the, the, uh, the clays. Uh, what we decided to do was uh, we took out all of those uh, vibrating feeders and we're putting in a tan feeder. It's like a conveyor belt, only it's all metal. Uh, it's very robust. Uh, so we're putting that in. That will eliminate any of this packing of, uh, of clays or any kind of handling materials. We decided not to use the, uh, the cone crusher. We put in two jaw crushers, a primary jaw crusher and a secondary jaw crusher to be able to handle any of those materials. And it handles it really well. And the third thing we did was we added a rodman uh, in front of the ball mill. Uh, and, and that is to mainly uh, you know, uh, assist with the, the, the grinding process, if you will, because um, typically you would have a cone crusher and you'd be able to crush a little bit finer, but with the, the jaw crushers, it's, it's a coarser grind. The rod mill will assist with that. And then from there, we go to the ball mill and into the flotation circuits. Uh, and we uh, make a concentrate, put it in bags. That's pretty much uh, it. We're putting in a couple of screens in, uh, in, uh, to replace cyclones, uh, those kinds of things. All that equipment is here. For instance, the screens are installed. Uh, the uh, the pan feeder is going in, uh, being installed now, th these kinds of things. Um, we don't anticipate any problems at all with uh, completing this. Um, uh, thank you. When we look at the ad additional resource um, for the future, uh, are you more interested in uh, down deep directions uh, at the known veins or you are looking into more new veins? Well, you know, we're, uh, we have nine veins on our property, nine primary veins. Right now, we're only focused on the Virginia's vein, which gives us our, our life of mine and our upside. But we, uh, we do have one crew designated and, and working on uh, the Wheel of Fortune vein, which is a high-grade gold vein. We're actually driving some drift there now to get ourselves in a position to do some drilling. And we think from what we can see from the records, there's uh, some areas in there that look like, uh, we don't know because we don't have a drill hole in it yet, uh, but we're anticipating to see something in the neighborhood of a half an ounce per ton gold with some silver. Uh, that would be easy uh, mining and, and it's uh, very uh, close to our existing operations. It, the, the same tunnel that goes in 
to uh, to produce uh, and, and the work that we're doing now, it, we, it's just uh, uh, comes right off that tunnel. So we have access and whatnot. So we're looking at doing that. Um, we have uh, the terrible vein, <laughs> the bad name, but it's uh, it's uh, it is the name of it. Uh, the terrible vein, the Coronado, the Yellow Rose, the Wheel of Fortune, uh, Cumberland, all of those are ours. They were our past producers. But be honest with you, we just haven't had the time uh, to get in and do it, or the money for that matter, to do any exploration. But our intention would be is first, you know, I just want to make sure we're, we're dead focused on getting to production. Uh, after that, then we want to prioritize, uh, you know, where our money is best spent. Uh, to give us the biggest bang for the buck. So that, that's where we are right now. But eventually we'll get to all of those veins and I think they'll, they will all be producers. And that's why we believe, you know, uh, that uh, this is gonna be a multi-decade mine that's gonna run for a very long time. Thank you, Kellen. Campbell? Sure, um, just gonna uh, wrap up with a few questions that were sent in and then I think uh, we'll, we'll close. Um, Kevin, can you just, talk about your career as previous to Arcana as it and that 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 experience and projects you've worked on um in advance of uh and you know sort of in preparation for um making this company work so uh, sure it's applicable in your 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 cv yeah, well, I, I've been in this business a very long time. I, I'm, I'm an operator. I consider myself an operator. I'm not an explorationist. Um, I, I started out in the iron ore business and was there for 10, 12 years and then graduated at, to you know, places like Cypress Anvil Mining up in the Yukon uh, and eventually um, uh, uh, had mines in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Peru, um, Africa, um, Russia. United States, Canada, and so on. But primarily of all the things, I'm, I'm an operating guy. Um, I spent uh, five years with Kinross Gold, um, and we had, uh, I think it was seven mines in the Northern Hemisphere that I managed for Kinross, including the their Kubaka mine, all the Russian operations, the Fort Knox mine, the Kettle River mine in Washington, Lupin in Northern Canada, and uh, the um, New Britannia mine, plus uh, the uh, blanket mine in Zimbabwe, and uh, got to work on the Katanga mine when Kinross owned most of that in the DRC. Uh, so been around a little bit. I left uh, Kinross in 2003. I was joined Glen Cairn Gold. We built uh, a couple of mines, uh, ran the uh, the ones in Nicaragua and the, the Costa Rican mine at the time. Uh, started up another gold mine in um, Peru. And uh, Peru was uh, one of the mines, by the way, where we use Rasu mining, the same mining method that we're going to be using here. Uh, so we uh, we operated that, eventually uh, sold that, um, and um, came joined Orcana. I actually retired for a period of time in 2010, I think, to 2013. Uh, came back, joined Orcana as a um, as a board of director, a, a member of the board and realized how badly mismanaged this was. Uh, I eventually took over the company in mid uh, 2014 to try and get it out from what I thought was bankruptcy. We survived that and uh, we sold the mine, the La Negra mine in, uh, in uh, Mexico that we owned. I lived the fight another day and finally brought the revenue mine into the fold here in 2018 to get it back into production. So I uh, spent my career basically, I've been doing it 50 years, uh, spent my career either building mines or operating mines. Hope that helps, uh, Campbell. Sure, sure. Um, any royalties on the project? There is a royalty uh, held by uh, the original owner, A.E. Reynolds, of uh, everybody I think has used Reynolds Wrap uh, at one point in time. We're not the same family. Uh, it's capped out at nine million bucks. Okay. Um, There was a reference to Montrose and Shafter, uh, not Virginius. Can you please clarify? Montrose is a uh, town nearby here, about a half hour drive from Ure. Uh, it, it's really, that's all it is, it's just a, just a town. Some of our employees live there. The Virginius is, the, the name of the mine is the Revenue Virginius Mine. 
the Virginia's vein is the main vein that we're mining. And Shafter, of course, is uh, in Texas, uh, you know, the Revenue Virginia's mine in Colorado, and the Shafter mine is uh, in Texas. Texas, by the way, is a great place to do business as well, as is Colorado. Excellent. Um, do you need any more cash to fund the project? No, nope, we're good. We've got sufficient contingency to get this thing done and get ourselves into uh, uh, production, uh, as well uh, also to be able to execute on some of these, uh, you know, with the shafter, we want to do some drilling that's going to take a bit of money. Uh, we want to do a feasibility study that's going to take some money, those kinds of things. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're sufficiently funded, Campbell. Okay. Um, can you talk about other silver companies uh, that are a bit more are, are you know, closer to the stage of development that you are in Colorado, uh, if any, and why not? There's none. There's there's no others. Um, I, I I can't quite speak to that. I can speak for us, but why why there's nobody else there? I don't know. Um, we're there. Um, uh, there's there's only I think two projects in, in literally in Canada and the United States that's going to be coming into production now that's silver. Uh, there's uh, I was looking at some uh, some data uh, on that a little while ago and uh, there's very very few silver mines coming online. I think we're Alexco uh, came online I believe a few months back uh, and then of course we'll be hitting production in. Um, uh, in July, so uh, very, very few to choose from right now. Um, by the way, I put on the in the handouts section of GoToWebinar here that funding control panel um, copy of the this presentation. So if you find your way there, you can download it right now. Um, really, just one more question. Okay, you're back. Uh, your full commercial production, everything's in order as planned. Um, maybe this is premature. What are you going to do with the cash flow? <laughs> uh, grow us an empire. Uh, start on work on the other projects. Uh, hopefully, you get bought out. Buy back your shares. Dividend. Uh, uh, is it premature to bring that up? But that's certainly some of your shareholders on this call uh, are are bringing that up. So yeah, well, you know, obviously, uh, I. I I don't want to jinx anything, and I prefer not to talk about right. it because. Don't of want to commit. Uh, but uh, you know, we've got options. Uh, paying down the debt certainly would be high on that priority list. We can certainly, and and you know, uh, as a board and, and management, uh, consider dividending some of this cash out. Uh, we do want to certainly do some additional exploring. We believe that you know, uh, if we can maintain a, a minimum of a ten-year reserve life in front of us. We don't want to have 20 years of reserves because that's going to take a lot of money to have that uh, out that far in front of you in the type of mining that we do, which is narrow vein. You practically got to do 80% of the mining costs in order to explore. So what we need to do is we want to get a 10-year mine life. We want to replace our reserves every year for the next 100 years. And that's what Dome Mine, I used to work for Dome Mines in Timmins, Ontario, Canada. And we ran, that mine ran 120 years and it had carried two years of reserves in front of it for those 120 years because it was narrow vein and because of the cost of that. So we've got all of these competing, uh, you know, um, needs for cash, whether it be buying back shares or dividends, uh, exploration and paying down the debt, but paying down the debt is going to be a fairly high priority. Uh, we certainly would like to dividend some money out to our, our uh, shareholders. I think that would bode very well for us. Uh, we do want to uh, keep the exploration and the development out in front of us. Uh, so uh, those are the kinds of things that we're looking at. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. I, I want to get in production first. Good. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and um, exciting things going on at Arcana. Uh, with that, um, we'll be queuing you for feedback. Please. Um, shoot us a few lines really appreciative and um the week play will be available in an hour uh or so at anvestcapital.com slash webinars kevin oh one or two sentences and we'll 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 call it a day well thanks everybody do appreciate your time and and uh, interest in orcana uh you know the catalyst here is going to really be getting ourselves into production i think 
So uh, stand by for that. We'll be providing updates within the next uh, few weeks, uh, in a little more detail on uh, where we are and timing and so on. But uh, we're on our way here, I think, to uh, good things. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Good day. Cheers. Thanks.